Hi, welcome to The Key, where we unlock all that God has for you. I'm your host, Jen Lee, and my mission is to connect you with the God that created you for a purpose. In John 10, 10, it says that the thief came only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give them life and life more abundantly. Well, happy Juneteenth, you guys. I wanted to talk just a little bit about this today because when I was praying about this message, I usually just say, Lord, okay, what scripture would you like me to go to? And right away, he said, Philemon. Now, some of you might be thinking, I've never heard of that book. I didn't know that was a book in the Bible. And the reason for that might be because it's a very, very short book. It's really only about two pages in length, but it's one of Paul's letters in the New Testament. And we talked about this a little bit in Bible college, but it was interesting because Philemon is all about a slave being set free. So I thought this is really interesting that God is connecting this today on Juneteenth, which is when all of the remaining slaves in America were set free um, in 1865, I believe it was. So we just thank you, Lord, for righting that very egregious wrong, Lord. And we thank you for the continued healing that you are doing in our country um, concerning just some of these old roots, Lord, that lead back to slavery. Father, we thank you that um, you are working in this and that unity is rising in Jesus' name because in the kingdom, there is no room for racism. And we praise you, Lord, that you made all peoples, God. We thank you, Father, for raising up unity and love in the United States of America. In Jesus' name, amen. And you guys, forgive any background noise. We have construction going on outside of our house, and some days it is so, so noisy, but I can't seem to quite get around it, so we just move forward. But talking about the book of Philemon, so the Lord brought me to this book, and I thought this was interesting because the, my first thought was, in some way, we all are slaves. We all have been slaves. And what I mean by that is we all have been a slave to sin. If we are not in Christ, if we haven't received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are still a slave to sin because we were born into this sinful world. And until we receive him, we really have no spiritual power to fight the enemy, to overcome sin. We can't overcome sin in our own strength. So back to that in a little bit. But first, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this story in Philemon. Um, this is an account of Onesimus. There's some really good names in here. <laughs> Onesimus and Paul and Philemon, who was a slave owner. Philemon was a slave over owner who had come to know the Lord through the Apostle Paul. So they had become good friends. And um, Philemon actually was hosting home churches, um, church in his home. So they were very, very connected, very good friends. Onesimus is the slave that had run away from Philemon. And he had a divine encounter with the Apostle Paul when he ran away, when he escaped to Rome. And he actually met Paul there and Paul then let led this slave to the Lord. And they became very close. And Onesimus then was staying with Paul. And from what we gather in the book, he was some sort of maybe assistant to him. He was helping him in a lot of things and they had grown very, very close. And in the book, Paul talks about him and says that Onesimus has become like a son to him. And he says that he loves him. So, but because Onesimus had run away from his owner, from Philemon, he actually had broken the Roman law. So under Roman law, 
Philemon had the right to kill his slave. Not that he would have done that because he had already had an encounter with God. But a lot of people back then, not knowing the Lord, would probably not have thought twice about it. And in fact, they could kill their slaves for much, much less. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But anyway, so during this time when um, Onesimus had met Paul, Paul was busy writing much of the New Testament. Paul led Onesimus to the Lord. They became very close. So he was helping him, and then Paul realizes, you know, it, it's come to a point where he knows that Onesimus needs to go and make peace with Philemon, that there needs to be restoration there, and Philemon needs to know that now this slave has become a brother in Christ. So he writes this letter to Philemon on Onesimus' behalf. He sends Onesimus back to make peace with Philemon. Um... So because of the Roman law, he had the right to kill him. But Paul knows Philemon very well. He knows his heart. And he believes with all of his heart that if Onesimus goes back and is repentant, that there will be complete restoration and that he, in fact, will be set free because of this, because of his humility. So in the letter, he asks Onesimus to give him grace and to now see him and receive him as a brother in Christ, since he's now a believer as well. He asks him to forgive him, receive him as an equal, because they are brothers. This is a wonderful story of love and forgiveness and restoration, as someone who used to be viewed only as a slave is set free and becomes someone that people cherish and value. But this is what God really wanted me to point out that we are all slaves to sin and to this world system until we receive Jesus. He is the one who gives us forgiveness through his blood and gives us the strength to become conquerors over sin. In John 8.36, you've probably heard this, it says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I'm just going to go to that for a minute here because... This is when Jesus is talking to the Jews and he's talking about how, you know, they might think they're free, but they're actually slaves to sin until they receive him. And they say to him, how can you say that? We are Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? And Jesus answers them. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And this makes me think back to Onesimus again, because he really became a son through coming to know the Lord he, God brings him to a whole new level in life. Sometimes I think we think that we're stuck. We think that we're stuck somewhere in a certain, you know, station in life or because of our family, you know, we put these different limitations on ourselves. And something that I felt like the Lord was highlighting in this is that Jesus not only sets us free but he can supernaturally move in circumstances that seem impossible. Okay, this slave probably never thought that he would be set free. And I'm sure that's why his desperation grew and he just thought, I'm going to run off. Because he never thought he'd actually be free. And then look at what the Lord did. I just love how of all the people that he runs into, uh, when he runs off, he runs into the Apostle Paul. Okay, Could he have found anybody you know, that was more on fire, someone more able to help him in his situation? And he has this encounter. And because of this, God sets him free and God raises him up. So another point is, so God is raising up people to new levels that they never thought that they could achieve. But this takes obedience and humility. Onesimus really had to humble himself to return to Philemon first. And then God set him free, rewarded him for his honesty and his humility. 
He could have made the choice to run and hide for the rest of his life. That seems like the easy way sometimes. But he made the right choice and God rewarded him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, there's a lot you could say about that. Sometimes you have to humble yourself in order for restoration to come. And, you know, somebody commented the other day on Facebook about, um, you know, how people are, they're so angry right now. And the things that they're writing sometimes are just so vulgar and hateful. And I was thinking about how it takes humility right now to, to be able to, to take a step back, to take a deep breath and, you know, maybe some of us might even need to apologize to people for some of the things that we've been saying or yelling about or putting on social media. Um, it really takes a lot of thought right now, I think, to even put anything out there. Um, we need to be sure, you know, that we are dwelling on on the good things and some, you know, some of the good things that are happening right now, some of the the lovely and pure things and spreading some of that news because it's so easy to just let your emotions take hold and then say something that you'll later regret. And when I was praying about this, I felt like the Lord was highlighting that some of you, some of us <laughs> might need to apologize for something even if we didn't think we were wrong. And even if maybe we know we weren't in the wrong, that sometimes an apology will restore a relationship just because, you know, maybe you weren't doing something wrong or you weren't consciously, intentionally doing something wrong, but you hurt another person. Once in a while, God will instruct you to just go low, to, to go um, in humility to that person and say, you know, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. I'm sorry for the way that I acted. And then God will restore that relationship. And that is more important to him right now than, um, you know, showing how smart you are, how knowledgeable you are on a certain subject. So just if, if that's you, if you feel kind of a funny little nudge in your spirit right now, I would take that to the Lord and just say, okay, God, I think you might be talking to me about apologizing to this person because he really wants to, you know, hold together your family relationships and your friendships. Um, and, and that is more important to him right now because we're not going to be able to impact people for good later on if we are severing ties with them because of one stupid thing that we said on social media. So just take that to the Lord. I think that's really important right now. I know the, the Lord had me do that one time and I felt like, well, I, I don't know if I was actually wrong, Lord, but he had not wanted me to do that. So I was in disobedience, so I had to go low. And then everything was restored so much better. And I'm so thankful for his wisdom in that, you know, that, that he knows every little thing that's happening. He knows um, what someone in your life needs from you in order to feel loved, to feel respected. So just ask the Lord about that and he will be able to come in and, you know, do miracles in some of these relationships. We really have to fight for our unity right now. And with everything that's going on, it's so easy to say, well, gosh, things are just getting worse and they're blowing up in front of my face. And in some ways that's true. But again, we have to, we have to dig and we have to look at what God is doing on a deeper level. You know, he brings things into the light. He exposes things in order to heal them. He exposes things in order to bring restoration because we have the tendency to hide and sin has the tendency to hide. It wants to hide. It wants to stay in your life to keep you bound, to keep you from moving forward into what God has. So I just thank you guys for watching today. If this blessed you, please go ahead and like it and share it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is The Key with Jen Lee. 
and let me know if you'd like to connect with me personally, if you'd like to hire me for an event at your church or your business or ministry, connect with me on social media. And I'll see you guys next Friday night at 6 p.m. Blessings. I need to.